So we are back. This is part two of a conversation that, um, or the episode that I was having with Chloe. And we decided to come back because there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes when you are evolving, when you are elevating, and when you are taking your brand to the next level. So Chloe had the opportunity to explain from her perspective some of the things that she actually does Mm -hmm. when she works with clients. But now she's actually going to take over this episode and she is going to kind of help bring it out of me some of the things that we had to go through as I am elevating and working to elevate and evolve my brand um, and get into some of the thought processes and things like that behind the scenes that a lot of people don't get to see. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Chloe. Where you want right. to? Where you want to go with well, this? I guess we should start with the dryness of the brand because your audience probably <laughs> didn't see it. They were just like, "I'm watching the podcast. I'm listening to the podcast." You know, this is pre-podcast. <gasps> Where's my pre pre-podcast? You because oh, I mean, dry. I guess the podcast is a part, or like season one was a part of the dryness. Yeah, I just do not like saying that. Yeah, but it was it ran- the truth. Okay. And mm-hmm. let me say, y'all, dry does not mean bad. In this mm-hmm. instance, it just means I could not see her most authentic self. And especially when you're a personal brand, whether you're a professional personal brand, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of you that needs to shine through. Like, I'm mm-hmm. all for separate business and personal, you know, all the things. Mm-hmm. But people are buying from the person. Mm-hmm. Like, other than even if you think about Amazon. No, Jeff Bezos is not in the front of every single Amazon thing, but you know exactly who that is, Mm -hmm. right? So therefore, there's part of his values and morals, though, that's pushed out through Amazon. Mm -hmm. Like, what if initially he was someone who was impatient? And that's where the two-day shipping might have come from. Now they offer one day and same day. Mm -hmm. But essentially, he knows people in general are impatient. Mm -hmm. Because it could have been because he was too. I'm not sure. But there's still parts of you that you have to infuse into your brand or business if you're starting one, no matter how big it grows. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I couldn't see any of that with you. Yeah, and I think think it's because, and I talked about this on another episode um, with Jessica, like when you're leaving corporate America, there's this, um, I guess, personality that you have that you have to work to shed because you really don't know who you are outside of that space especially after spending 14 years in corporate right that's a long time so it's like most of my adult identity that's even interesting just to say that was so tied to corporate and uh, you know coming out of undergrad one of my professors at morgan state she was always like you know make sure you're mindful of your facial expressions because I was going into the business world. Mm. So she was like, that's not a place for you to be expressive, right? And that's something that my best friend and I had to work on now. My best friend, she wears everything on her face still to this day, but I learned to kind of shut it off. And they definitely tell you that in corporate because you know, I didn't dye my hair purple until I left corporate America. Now, mm-hmm. you know, you know, the girl to do the photo shoots with the purple hair, even if someone doesn't know me, mm-hmm. that's part of that. But in corporate, it's like, mm, that's a little right. frowned upon, you right. know? So it's like, but as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to be yourself, mm-hmm. like, or at least show parts of yourself. I know the first thing that most people say to me when they sign on and I ask them questions about their self, they're like, eh, but I don't want a lot of my personal life. Like, they think personal life, like, I don't want to show you and your whole relationship unless that's part of your brand. Like, if you're mm-hmm. a relationship coach and stuff like that, you can't do all the little classic shots like that, right. you know, because we want to know you're in a successful relationship if you're trying to tell me mm-hmm. how to be in one. So that's different. But essentially, that's the first thing people say. I don't want to put too much of my business out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, of course, we wouldn't put things out that things should that you should know. Like in my brand, am I talking about my last experience with dating? No. Mm-hmm. Like unless you actually know me and talking to me, I wouldn't put that out. Not because I'm ashamed. It's just it makes no sense to talk about. It doesn't right. filter in with everything. Mm-hmm. But when it's part of your morals, it does matter. Mm-hmm. Or at least like for your audience to be able to pick up on your energy and how you are. Mm-hmm. Because they might not connect with you. And then it might be where they purchase something or they purchase a class and they're like, I just didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, like connect with her like that. So because every person that you encounter or that books you is not going to come into your personal bubble, Mm -hmm. you have to be able to exude 
these things mm -hmm. without them knowing your business. I think there's also a fine line though, right? Because when you think about um, being a personal brand or being an entrepreneur who has a brand, um, you know, it's not just about not putting your personal business out there. It's about wanting people to buy the product mm -hmm. and not the person. Because too often people put so much emphasis or so they kind of tie what they expect out of mm -hmm. the product to the person. And that's not what I'm selling, right? Exactly. That's, and that's also like a fine line that, and I think that's kind of why I've been kind of just behind the scenes. And then just yeah. naturally with what I do with my clients, it's behind the scenes work. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, I'm the same way, right. you know, like I'm behind the camera, I'm telling you how to pose, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, that don't mean my pictures gonna be phone pictures because if I'm telling you, you have to invest in visuals. It's like, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to think of the best way to put this, but putting more of yourself out there doesn't necessarily always mean your business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It could be you more so talking about the product versus having all the influencers do it, you mm -hmm. know, like, cause there's some people who are product based. So there's also that difference too. Are you a product based business, service based business, or is it, you know, literally like the coaching and where they are going to be in your space mm -hmm. as far as your services. So there's still levels for sure. I think a lot of people don't understand though. When I say put more of yourself out there, it doesn't mean telling them something. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to show up more, but it's when you do, there's still something that mm -hmm. people have to feel. Mm -hmm. Like purchases in general are emotional. Absolutely. Whether they're a service, a product, whatever, people mm -hmm. make that because it's emotional. It's like when they tell us, you know, we doing sales strategies or things like that, you know, they're telling you speak to the pain points. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. But so that means you spoke to their pain point, they gonna feel away. Right. So you're making, trying to make them feel a way to buy something. Right. But some of these emotional decisions are unconscious or subconscious. So it's not that you're trying to make them feel a way. You're just being yourself. And they're like, you know what? I resonate with that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're just showing what the product actually does, that's why I like the live demonstrations are good. You know what? That's exactly how my skin is when I mm -hmm. do whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's still different ways of putting that out there. And for me, my job is to visually do that. Right. Because it won't always be something you say. Mm -hmm. It might, it won't always be like a fact or like something we can do key points. It's just something people feel. Mm -hmm. So my job is to make the visuals evoke the emotions. Right. Without you putting a lot out. And that's that, me knowing me, like I said on the last, <laughs> the part <laughs> one, right? Colors, not my thing. Um, creating visuals not my thing I could care less right those are not that's not my thing and I think a lot of times people mistake those things to be marketing and they are an aspect of marketing but they're not the end all be all of marketing and so just where I lie as a strategist what I focus on is the things that you not you can't necessarily see right it's all the invisible marketing things mm -hmm. right it's not the visible marketing things so for me, like when I launched my business, I threw, because I'm not the type of person that's gonna wait. And I know you were in my DMs like, what is this that you're posting on this social media, these colors, man, what are you doing? Yes, yeah, because she, she be in my DMs harassing me like, this is not you, this is not what we discussed. But I am the type of person that I'm going to move on something, I'm not just gonna wait because it's not yeah. visually a visually pleasing, right? And that's how I've built my business thus far. It, it wasn't really the visuals, it was really the invisible things that people yeah. couldn't see. So they could, they did connect, but I think what you're saying from a visual standpoint, you're like, mm, it's, it doesn't really match with right. who you are as a person. And I pick on myself when I say this, but I tell people all the time, I speak in visuals. Like you as do. soon as somebody puts an image in my head or like you're describing something, I have a whole movie that yes. has passed by in my head and now i'm telling you exactly what we need to do where we need to move but i may not be the best at words mm -hmm. when it comes to that mm -hmm. but that's my superpower you know mm -hmm. like working with a copywriter you right. know like those are two different things and sometimes like when my copywriting partner and i started working together she didn't understand what the point of such a large visual investment was until she saw how I did it. Like mm -hmm. she had worked with other designers before. She had worked with, you know, like other people who do branding before. And she was like, oh, like this is the first time in a photo shoot I felt like I could do what I actually do on a day to day and mm -hmm. it was fine. Cause a lot of things, like, like you said, like you feel like you shouldn't be doing them. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. because it's business. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we have to see that aspect. And especially in this day and age now, so much content, content, content. You right. got to show a little content to do this. You got to show you enjoying life. You got to do this. That's literally them telling you to sell your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. That's what you're actually doing. Mm-hmm. That's not the part of you doing this fancy brand shoot. You mm-hmm. know, like your lifestyle, it may include that, but that ain't every day. That's so not every talk, month. Let's talk about selling lifestyle. Cause there's people out here that are selling lifestyle and it's not a Their true lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. right? So it's like, have you ever had a client who was like, I want the Lamborghini, but they drive in a Pinto? Um, yes. Okay. 100%. I I probably had like a lot of everything, but I think a lot of my clients are like you, where even though they'll be patient and wait Mm. on me to figure it all out, they're also doers. Mm. And they're like, we want, I want this, this, this. Okay, well, I'm going to just do this temporarily until we circle back and you do it for real. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But people hear lifestyle and there's just so many different connotations attached to words and things now yes. like content 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 has been misconstrued in so many ways yes. consistency Life, exactly. is another one that's been consistency misconstrued. for me does not mean to post a lot consistency and but this that's is just for me mistake it exactly. as frequency consistency, and consistency for me means post the same type of value mm. each time mm. so a lot of people, if you actually read the definition of words, mm-hmm. like we've kind of made them to our we own made things. It up. Like yes. now consistent means you need to post every day at least this many times. No, like, and you know, I do not post. Anybody mm-hmm. following me knows I'm not, not because I don't think I need to, mm-hmm. not because I don't know that it's attached to business success in some ways, but it's not the only way to succeed. Like a lot of Correct. people don't know, you get about 30% more traffic from Google searches than you do from social media, click link and bio. Yes. And, but I have to tell people all the time. So that's why we're putting so much into your website because mm-hmm. people can come from anywhere, including Instagram, Twitter, whatever, get to your site Mm -hmm. and see what you got going on. Mm -hmm. But when you go there and there's a detachment from everything else and you don't look authentic and you've just been focusing on purchasing consistently, Mm -hmm. that's not that. And I feel like lifestyle, the word lifestyle has been misconstrued. Mm -hmm. Like now it means private jets and, you know, uh, sipping wine all the time, having the vibes, having Mm -hmm. the views, going out to eat. Half the people who are doing that may not have the funds. And that's not my business. I don't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I want to know your lifestyle. And you know, most of our relationship has me been me digging deep into tell me what you do on this day. What do mm-hmm. you do during a VIP session? What do you do on a regular day? Mm-hmm. What are you doing at home? What are you doing on an off day? What are you doing on the weekends? Not mm-hmm. because we're putting your business out. But we need to understand because all these different things are still things that people who you may be marketing to also do right so you have to be able to transition that lifestyle then into the content that can lead to the sale because it built the relationship and the trustworthiness so what you're saying as far as your definition of lifestyle is taking your actual lifestyle and leveraging that into your visual brand not yeah. taking someone else's lifestyle kind right. of the faking it till you making it thing right and using that as your visual brand yeah that's totally different that's not what you're talking about correct but that's what people think when they think lifestyle nowadays yeah. like it's been i think it i hope it's gonna die down a little bit more but right now even if you go on pinterest mm-hmm. and type in lifestyle automatically it puts luxury lifestyle mm-hmm. right there in a lot of places, or it'll give you like, also view luxury lifestyle pins. You see Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because lifestyle, it's not just that though, Mm -hmm. but that's just what it's become. When people are searching that, that's usually what they're looking for. Right. And I'm like, that's not realistic. If you're telling me you just had a baby, Mm -hmm. I promise you that's probably not what you're doing because that's not your focus. I'm not saying you can't live that lifestyle, but also how does that go in accordance to branding right. and your brand specifically like there's different things for example you know you and i both both work with a lot of beauty brands mm-hmm. and product-based brands in the beauty industry and the first thing they think about is luxury hair when you hear luxury extensions luxury hair they're like i just want it to be flowing i want her to look like she's living this life and mm-hmm. da, 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 da. i'm like we get it women mm-hmm. who are at a certain level 
they we like to look nice. Mm-hmm. We like to dress nice, mm-hmm. you know. But there's also women who might not be your audience that might live in luxury, but they don't wear extensions. Right. So you also got to think about what's the lifestyle. And this is something that it's hard to explain, but you also got to think of the lifestyle of your brand. Because there's yes. your lifestyle, mm-hmm. but then there's the lifestyle of the brand. And that's what does, what does the brand do on a day-to-day? Mm-hmm. What does it need to do? What does it need to show? If you're a hair brand and you're telling me, like, this is my natural hair, right? Mm-hmm. So you're now telling me I need extensions. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you want me to feel like I need them so that I can buy them. Mm-hmm. But you don't necessarily have to. Like, you wear your natural hair. Mm-hmm. But they make extensions that look like, you natural, know, 4C right. and natural mm-hmm. curls. Come on, Tell I us, my ponytail listen, on. Mm-hmm. Listen, tell us why we need them. (laughs) So if you're telling us to change our lifestyle Mm -hmm. to now meet the lifestyle, that's the brand's lifestyle. So you're telling me the lifestyle of your brand is you have to have this longer hair or fuller hair or whatever the case may be to live the best life. Mm. So you also have to be able to connect. So there's so many sciences and I'm speaking general as much as I can, but you know that my process with you has been completely different. And I've explained that to you every step of the way, Mm -hmm. how it's different and why. Mm -hmm. And it's not because my process is different, but your lifestyle is not like anybody else's. Somebody else's, right. So let's talk about the process and the evolution, because I said this earlier, I feel like as I came to work with you, our brands have started to evolve together, right? And we've sort of um, started to uncover what it is that we wanna represent in this world and who, how we wanna make a stamp, right? As far as you being a chief brand officer and myself being a outsourced chief marketing officer. So I want you to talk about, from your perspective, What was it in particular in working with me that kind of started that evolution for you? Or was it already started and did clarity come from our our working relationship? I think it was already started just because I knew I wanted something different coming into a different stage of my healing Mm -hmm. still. But that's why I also think like the connecting aspect is so important between the type of clients I work with and I. Mm -hmm. Because as much as I want to get to know you, For me to do that, you're going to have to know some of who I am. Mm -hmm. That's where trust comes from. And that goes back to why you put certain aspects of your lifestyle out there. Mm -hmm. Because the trust is what makes people do it. Like, I'm going to be transparent with y'all. We had a hiccup in her branding (laughs) process. Mm -hmm. And every client would not have handled it with the grace that she did. But because she trusted that my vision for what she wants and needs is bigger than me or her, she let me do it and now it's flowing again smoothing. But that that comes from her actually being around me. Like that right. comes from, like we actually have conversations that are not always, is it on the calendar? Because right. sometimes there's a little bit more you have to pull. Right. And so everything is not always so cookie cutter and that's why I don't see consistency as posting, posting, posting all the time, all the time, all the time. Because for me, it's the same type of value Mm -hmm. because I don't have a cookie cutter process. I'm not a cookie cutter person. Mm -hmm. I can't make everybody look like one specific cookie cutter thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's just not what I'm doing. And so I have to also give you a piece of me Mm -hmm. in the process. What if I had the mentality, well, I don't want you to know me for real. And we was just like, okay, well just, I'm gonna just design. Here's your new colors. Mm -hmm. Here's your logo. Here's uh, your new website. And we're gonna do a shoot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happens so often. And I think that that's also why there's kind of like this um, paradigm shift that's happening, right? I think that that's what has happened in the industry. And not just speaking about brand designers. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about even people who work with coaches and consultants, right? They're so used to just getting the service or the end result and not yeah. really taking the time to build and connect a relationship with the person that they're working with. And I think for you, you to me, me to you, like we're both very intentional about building that relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think even if we hadn't met in person, we still would have done that because you that's just who you are naturally and that's just how I am naturally. And I yeah. would think that my clients would say the same thing, right? I really take that time to really get to know them because again, I like how you said it. I have to give them a piece of me. Like this is deep work. It's it's deep work. Like like, branding is legitimately an emotional 
connection no matter yeah. from what perspective you're doing it no matter what scale so when you're just telling the designer i just need a new look or whatever and you're not saying why like i've heard that plenty of times like i told her i just need a new look i'm like mm -hmm. okay but to show what mm -hmm. like what happened in your life that make you feel like you need a new look mm -hmm. so going back to the the nba example right like they turned 75 the mm -hmm. nba is 75 years old so obviously just like the shorts done got longer you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying the the view of the nba the look of the nba has changed mm -hmm. so there's been an evolution like there's this one cup that i have at home from a game and it actually has all the hawks logos mm -hmm. from the beginning and they're very subtle changes but they knew they had to evolve you have to evolve with the times like burger king rebranded what last year mm -hmm. they didn't announce it it didn't a rebrand right. doesn't have to be this big over the right. top event right, right and they right. didn't announce it you just start seeing like mm, the rapper changed a little bit you mm -hmm. know like they made it more playful because they had been having their regular branding for so long their logo mm -hmm. didn't change it got updated mm -hmm. but it was still the burger you know it's still with the words in the middle it's just the font change mm -hmm. so a rebrand is not this overhaul every time now, if you're going from DIY to having a professional do it, it's probably going to look 100% different. Mm -hmm. But even still, it should be broken down by elements. Okay, why did it look like that? What needs to stay? Mm -hmm. What did you like? What does this mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people aren't branding with meaning. They just, they just think about, I need a new look. But the meaning behind the look. And you know what? That's very similar to marketing as well. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, especially a lot of times people who are struggling with their business to make sales, to, um, you know, have effective marketing, they think that a rebrand is going to solve their problem. Now, that could very well be a component of what they need. But in actuality, they also throw out their marketing strategy as well. And they try to start from scratch with the rebrand. But it's not throwing everything away, right? So to your point of the Hawks logo evolving over time, it's like, let's look at your strategy and figure out what is really good about it and then make tweaks, right? So I like exactly. that analogy for both branding and marketing. It's not just getting rid of everything. Yeah. Um, and even when you do a rebrand, you should not just throw away your entire marketing strategy, right? right? And when you think about that connectivity of it, um, you really have to keep certain elements in place or else you're going to have a completely new business and people are going to be confused. And, th and that's the and thing. That's the thing and that's why be... there's a difference between right. business and branding too. Like right. it doesn't mean your business is not doing well. Right. Like, I will be honest and say your business does need to be doing something though to mm -hmm. work with me because it is an investment, but mm -hmm. there's a reason it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to dig, like the work's going to get done, but there's going to be digging and they have to have at least those six months there. Like, I don't think people understand that these larger companies, they plan things years in advance. Oh, yes. But as it. a small business, you know, people be like, I'm trying to have everything changed in a month. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> think you understand how this works and right. how this changes. Like, I have multiple clients currently. Mm -hmm. And I think I've told you about some of them that are doing product development. So we're mm -hmm. doing their packaging and things, right? That alone can easily be a three, four month process. Mm -hmm. The cheapest shipping option is typically 60 days and mm -hmm. that's just shipping. That doesn't include the one day it had, I mean the one month it had to get made, mm -hmm. the time it takes to submit an order, like submitting an order when you're doing 100% custom, it's not a immediate process. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be able to explain to them, no, we want this here, but in foil over here, not just, oh, I want the white box and we're just gonna put the logo on. I'm talking about completely custom from the material it's made out of. Mm -hmm. and. Most of the times these things happen in China. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's a 12 hour difference. So sometimes you're tired and you want me to stay up and communicate all these things. Like this whole process is ongoing. Your custom aspect is your new uh, educational materials. Mm -hmm. So therefore, no, we don't have to get it sent off or anything like that to that magnitude. But if it was a product, say you, to you told me what I want it as a hardcover book, mm -hmm. that's still a completely different aspect mm -hmm. and then to have to wait that long like true branding is not always a rush process and it's definitely planned i think in and that's a great point that you bring up like in branding it's not a rush process business is not a rush process either right You're none right. of us got to the point where we are today by rushing you have to effectively plan and somebody said earlier yep. plan prepare and position yourself hmm. right I like that. so 
if you're not doing those things and you're just expecting things to happen overnight, you're really setting yourself up to be disappointed. So, right. you know, branding takes time. Marketing takes time. All of it takes time and you're going to change and evolve, especially in the first few years of yeah. business. Right. Hence why I'm doing a, a rebrand. Right. You know, I so, think too rebrand is one of the words that has gotten a weird connotation. Yes. Like rebrand now equates to overhaul. And, and I think that. it's more rebrand is actually an evolution. Mm -hmm. There's there's a difference. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing for me, you know, I'm always realizing things with you. Like something about Terry, y'all, like I always realize so much more in real time. Like that's why I'm like the connection is different, but we've invested mm -hmm. in it since for the past, what, five months mm -hmm. almost now. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been, okay, she booked me and now we're here. Like, no, it's been five months and we still have a little less than half the project. She stuck with me for life anyway, so it don't matter. She's so over me, but she stuck. <laughs> anywho, anywho, me and my French roll, I'm mm. um, going to pop out one day. <laughs> Just wait for it. But the fact of the matter is it takes time. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just realized I think I specialize in brand evolutions specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it can be a new business still, or it can be someone who's already in business, but at the same time, Either way, you're trying to level up. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going from, I'm working with somebody, I got saved up, now I'm ready to invest in myself. That's mm -hmm. still an evolution. Mm -hmm. That's an evolution of the person. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's my thing. Yeah. And I think, and you know what? I think we're going to close it out on this. Evolution has been the theme for this season, right? And I, I could not have orchestrated this to happen in this way. But evolution has literally been the theme thus far for season two. And so, you know, cheers to evolving. To Listen, evolving. I wish we had like a little clink. My brand clink. A little clink. clink. Nail clink. <laughs> <laughs> right? So People cheers to evolving. You know, I'm evolving my brand. Chloe is evolving her brand. Yeah. And again, it's a never ending process, right? So remember as you're building your business, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you got Especially when you do your photo shoot, please don't think it's a one time, like, okay, I've taken my right. photo. Like, that's what really irks me. I know we're ending, but I just want right. to say, please don't just do one photo shoot and think that that's it. Right. I mean, I. No, I had a couple photo shoots, so I can't even say like right because right you can't. But right. we can see people can see when it makes you look stagnant mm -hmm. from the visual perspective. And when, we, when I say visual, I'm thinking about perception, mm -hmm. not necessarily all the time what's actually there. Right. And so you know, say for example, say I get braids, mm -hmm. you know, at what point I did that photo shoot because right. I had braids right, versus right. switching my hair up, or if I got on a turtleneck and I'm posting this in July. You know I probably recorded right. this when it was cold. I didn't just right. wear a turtleneck because it was cold in there because I had no way of knowing that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's little things mm -hmm. that have to still make sense. And those small details, I think people, they kind of get lost in the sauce sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, cheers to continually evolving. Cheers to elevation and elevating our businesses and continuing to grow and be friends and cheer each other on and get to the big bag, right? Listen, listen, you cannot get to the big bag by yourself, I promise y'all. You cannot, absolutely not. Like, yeah, this podcast would not exist if I tried you to can't do it by stack myself, M's right? You without the people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, y'all, we signing out. Let's clink. Oh. <laughs>